this is the real reason why I stopped what I was doing to film a mailbag. I've got a package from Jobert. I guess I probably should be careful how much I cut. Um, Jobert, AKA Joey Strong from Nova Scotia, Kanukistan. Um, and we've got a package here in a vintage box, as I can tell, uh, which is very, very sweet. I don't think I did really any damage to it. Uh, this is not a VIC-20, but it's a VIC-20 box, which is pretty sweet. And we've got some bubble wrap. Man, look at that. Can you imagine getting that thing for Christmas back in the day? Picturing yourself playing Space Invaders, then when the kids go to bed, the dad is, uh, checking out the phone bill. He's putting his phone bill thing in there. Man, look at that. He paid, uh... Thirty-three dollars for his phone bill, man. That's that's some money back in the eighties. Uh, all right, so we've got this big twenty box. Let me clear out some space and crack this bad boy open. All right, I think I got all the tape cut. Let's see what we got. First time opening it. Uh, stickage. All right. <laughs> this is a lot of stuff. All right, I'm gonna I'm just gonna get all this stuff out on the desk and then we'll we'll regroup here. All right, first up, we have a nine pin joystick by the company Joystick. Um, and this is an Atari slash Commodore style joystick. And I actually never had this, well, suction cups still work. Um, I actually never really had this style with my Atari or even my PCs back in the day. I had some different ones, but this is really cool. So thank you, Joey Strong. All right, we got what looks like a fair dinkum selection of LEDs and stuff. Okay, I freaking love these 10 millimeter LEDs. I love them so much, I actually have a hard time using them in projects because like, I'm like, I don't wanna use up my supply of uh, 10 millimeter LEDs, but I am, <laughs> I am set for a while in 10 millimeter LEDs in these colored ones. I love when you know what color it is ahead of time. That is very, very, very sweet and I will treasure it always. Um, okay, these are, I'm trying to think. So I don't think these are normal tri-color LEDs. They could be, these are eight millimeter LEDs and uh, they could be standard tri-color or they could be addressable. Um, let's see here, let's look at these two. So these are five millimeter LEDs, red and blue. Okay, so th what is this? Is this like a three pin common cathode? Let's check this out. We have an LED tester. I don't know what I'm doing here, sitting, playing around. All right, so I've got that kind of dim. I guess I can put it somewhere a little bit brighter. Um, so yeah, we've got, you just get these nice, I love, they're just big, chunky, like look like big old jelly beans uh, in there on those things. And then these, Let's see what we do with these here. So, all right, so these took me a second to remember. I knew these said one of these was addressable, and this is. This is the PL9823, and these are actually essentially kind of like NeoPixels, but in individual eight millimeter LEDs. So uh, I'm gonna have to come up with something to do with these things, because they are very, very cool. Um, the idea of just addressing these giant LEDs. So I've got some ideas there. Uh, let's see what these are. These are uh, red and blue common cathode long lead LEDs. I like this Chazon company. I bought some stuff from them from uh, from Amazon before. So these things, uh, I gotta remember which way they go. I think the, it depends on if they're common cathode or anode. There we go. So this one's got blue this side and then I wanna keep, let's see, I wanna keep that down there. So this would be, like that, so you can make like red, blue, or purple um, from these little LEDs. And like I said, I've used this company before. I've used their S&D components. I've used their uh, LEDs, and I'm just real happy with them in general. So very, very, very cool. All right, what is this stuff here? What's this all marked? All LEDs blink. Oh, 1.5, except these. <laughs> so these are blinking. I've never owned any of these. I've never owned any of these blinking LEDs. Um, oh, I'm already mixing them up. Uh, oh, cool, he's even labeled what they are, so. Oh, look at that! Yeah, I've never owned these. Uh, Pile of Stuff has had them on YouTube, and I can actually kind of see them being really cool for little notification lights and things like that. Let's grab another one. Is that color changing? What's that one doing? It doesn't do anything backwards, right? Oh, it does! 
One direction is uh, red and the other direction's green. That's pretty sweet. All right, one more. This is a teeny one, three millimeter LED. A flashing green. That's kind of sweet to like not, again, another notification light type thing to not have to actually build any circuitry, but have it built into your um, to your LED itself. I'm gonna put that there and we'll see if that's, uh, if that's right. Oh, look, a little standoffs and everything. That's very, very cool. Thank you. All right. Uh, here, let's see what we got here. This is the uh, multi-purpose key studio shield. I love these multi-purpose shields. If you uh, if you've never seen one before, and I haven't used this one, I don't think. But uh, what's really cool about these is they're a really nice way to get a bunch of things hooked up without having to worry about the wiring. And so, um, you know, there'll be some basic documentation. Uh, Key Studio is freaking amazing, and they've got a wiki uh, that'll give you example code and all that. But like, if you wanna hook up a buzzer, you just plug it in. You don't worry about your polarity being backwards. And there's a time for that. There's a time to, to mess around with that. But you get three buttons here, and you get some extra pins. You have a potentiometer, you have some seven segment uh, LCDs. And, or LEDs, LCDs, um, stuff like that. You've got serial, you can put like one of those Bluetooth modules on here. So just a very simple way to kind of get started with some of these things. And, you know, if you're doing a thermostat or something like that, and you only need a couple of buttons on a screen, it may just have everything you need built right in. This is Lilygo. I love this company. This is an ESP32 uh, S3 R8 Wi-Fi BLE 1.9 inch LCD. And they show it being used as a clock, which is kind of cool. I don't, there we go. So, oh, there's something else in there too. Oh, two of them, what is this? <laughs> what is this? Is one of them like Laura or something? Uh, so we've got the smaller LCD with a little teeny tiny antenna on it. And uh, yeah, this looks like a shield basic. No, that could actually be a standalone board. And then, uh, yeah, there's no way you'd stack those. And then we also, have, I think this is the little go that's shown on the box. Uh, so what would this be? This is a Helltech. This is just another screen with like a 1.9 inch-ish um, OLED screen on it, which is very, very cool. And then these two antennas, which I actually don't see them hooking up. So maybe they're for something else, but these antennas um, go to something. They look like Laura type. Oh, hold on, hold on. oh, oh, look at this. We have the little, uh, antenna connector thing that snaps on out oh, right here right here so um this attaches to the bottom of the board and then this one uh you know this is the actual antenna so what is what would the antenna be for is that a wi-fi or is it something else like laura or something interesting i don't know i'm gonna have to play with that one that is very 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 cool all right so we've got another shield here oh look at that those are uh i'm guessing they're addressable leds right Key Studio SK6812. Um, those look like definitely addressable LEDs. And uh, the fact that you can just make little grids and matrices and all kinds of stuff with those. That is very sweet. Love me some Arduino shields. Uh, and here, let's see what we got here. This is, looks like another kind of multi-prototyping shield. This is the Easy Sensor Shield. And uh, so similar to the other one, you got a DHT11. You've got your potentiometer. Uh, what do they call that? Your rotation. Um, you've got a couple of push buttons here, another buzzer, uh, addressable LED, RGB LED, a uh, place to hook up serial. You've got a reset button. I'm guessing that might even be a temperature sensor down there, LM35. Uh, you've got a light sensor. You've got infrared in. Uh, you've got red LED, blue LED. <laughs> Look at that. I've never had, this is funny because I, mean, I obviously have a lot of Arduino stuff that I do, but I've never had any of these, I don't think. Uh, so very, very cool. And then here, oh, we've got a Nuno. Oops, well, my bad, sorry, I didn't mean to rip it. Uh, we've got a Nuno. So I love these. I love these newer ones they have with the USB-C. They're real low profile. They have these extra uh, pins on here for, you know, you don't have to use a breadboard because you've got a, a power ground and signal for each of your pins out here. Uh, you've got the, generally these things are really good, like really good quality. And just look how compact and smooth that is. Man, I'm telling you, I, I'm not a sponsor, um, but Key Studio, just really hard to beat in terms of the quality for the money. All right, we've got some WS2812B, uh, which are those addressable LEDs. Couple different styles of those, couple different sizes of those in SMD formats. And next up, we've got, oh, that's funny. I just did uh, a smaller version of these things 
on uh, on the channel before, but these are very, very cool. These are those, uh, they're like the, I forget what they're called, they're some kind of noodles, this uh, Cirque board, uh, no, it's for something else, but these are those little noodle strips. I'm gonna have to get a power supply and see if I can hook one up. All right, I didn't turn off all my lights, but I turned off some of my video lights to make it a little bit easier to see here. But uh, I've got the noodle hooked up to the uh, circuit specialist power supply over here and so I'm going to start turning it on you can see it is actually a bunch of little individual discrete LEDs which I don't know what I thought it would have been but uh it's a bunch of individual little LEDs and you turn it up and all of a sudden you get that neon glow and it just gets crazy I mean we're only at three volts now and it just gets crazy bright um these things are really, really wicked, the things you can do with them. So I need to find a fun, creative project for them. If you have an idea of one, uh, let me know. All right, next up is what actually got us talking, and it's this. Uh, this is a project Commodore 64 in a very nice case. Man, this is in good condition. Um, this is a project Commodore 64. Got some tape, got some Sharpie on it. No harm, no foul there. Um, but this is a project Commodore 64 that I think he said that he took a few capacitors out that looked like they were bad and um, so we'll have to do some investigation on that but I still have one Commodore 64 that's down and not working and um, so he sent me this one hoping that between the two of them I could get uh, you know can get one working and working well so and you know the other thing with these is the chips are starting to get harder and harder to find so uh, even the one that isn't working will definitely be a parts donor one to the uh, to the future so um thank you very much for this if you're interested in seeing it like it's it's kind of a mixed bag my audience isn't super into retro stuff sometimes so if you're interested in seeing me do restorations on stuff like this let me know in the comments if you're not interested in seeing that kind of stuff let me know that in the comments and it looks like we have some other stuff that goes with it um I don't have any cartridges. This is kind of funny. I don't have any Commodore 64 cartridge. What the heck is that? Uh, this is a the consultant. I don't. I mean, I don't know if that's like a copy protection dongle or what that is. I'm gonna have to look that up. Um, but I actually don't have any kind of cartridges other than the the dead test ones that I made. But we've got the music machine, the music composer, and international soccer uh, for the Commodore 64, which is very, very cool. Uh, so I've got my first three Commodore 64 cartridges. And then this is uh, basically, I think, a, it's not a MIDI cable. I don't honestly know what that is. Um, is it for a drive? I'll bet it's for a, uh, let's see here. Yeah, I'll bet it's for the cassette port. Um, yeah, so one thing, just a little pro tip here if you're not into the retro stuff. Uh, whenever you find these old things like Commodores and Ataris and stuff like that, do not plug them in using the original power supply. Uh, the voltages tend to drift over time and they drift up. So it's not uncommon for um, the power supply to kill off the actual computer. And so, um, in fact, when he asked me if I wanted the power supply, I told him no. Um, I mean, I would have taken the end cut off or something like that, but for the most part, uh, no, you don't want to plug the original power supply into here. I'm going to make my own. Look at this, we even have the Commodore 64 user's guide. Now, I did not grow up with the Commodore 64, which means a lot of the stuff in the Commodore 64 world is not um, not native to my brain. So I will actually probably read this and learn about these machines, and I'm guessing I'm gonna learn a whole heck of a lot. And man, I've been spoiled in this video. We've got one more thing here, and I think it's uh, missing a couple screws from what I was told, but we have a Raspberry Pi 400. Uh, again, I think the screws are gone from this thing, but uh, now we're missing a key there. Do we have a key somewhere? I don't remember, he might have told me about the key. Um, I'll be checking the boxes to see. Uh, but we've got the, the Raspberry Pi 400, which um, this is every bit as powerful as a Raspberry Pi 4, with the exception of um, you know having, I think, one less USB port and the built-in keyboard here. So um, even if this thing, if this key is bad or whatever, I can still use this for as an embedded Raspberry Pi and put it in projects because it uh, it's a very good standalone device. And 
Um, these things I think are probably the go-to right now if you have to buy a Raspberry Pi. Um, this is probably the one I would buy, honestly, because you can use it as a computer, you can embed it into stuff, which I mean, you know, it's kind of big for that, but you have the option to, um, and you can still have access to the GPIO. So that is my ridiculous haul of stuff. Thank you so much, Joey Strong from Nova Scotia. Um, he's going to have a YouTube channel coming out one of these days, so I will link to that whenever he comes up with it. And uh, yeah, this is absolutely ridiculous. And I am so blessed and so thankful for, um, for the kind donation and just the fun stuff that I get to play with. So hey, I'm having a great day, so why don't you have a great day.